Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already seen my first few YouTube videos, my name is Brittany and I am a part-time reseller. So I primarily resell clothing and shoes for men, women, and for kids. And I've been doing it for, I'm coming up on a year now, but I am slowly working towards a more full-time schedule. Today I wanted to go over my April sales. So the whole month of April. I want to be as transparent as possible with these types of videos to show you that it is possible to resell and make some really good money on a part-time schedule in without the aid of social media. For the month of April, I averaged about 15 to 20 hours a week, closer to the 15 mark than 20. I'm sure some weeks I was closer to the 20, but on average, we'll just say 15 to 20 hours a week. So with that in mind, let's jump into the video. So I'm going to show you both my gross numbers and my net numbers because I, I believe that that's gonna help you the best. So you might see, oh yeah, something sells for 50 bucks, but does it really sell for 50 bucks if you paid five bucks for it? If you pay 10 bucks in fees and another $5 in shipping, you really need to look at what you're actually gonna make. So that is your net profit. So in the month of April, my gross sales was $2,537.42. From that, I had 111 transactions, and since I sell on three different platforms, I sell on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark, I broke those numbers down for you to show that I did get sales, quite a good bit of sales on each of those platforms. So from those 111 transactions, 44 came from eBay, so that's about 40%. Uh, Mercari, I had 28 sales, so that's 25%. And Poshmark, I had 39, which is 35%. So I feel like those were pretty good numbers from each platform. So before I jump into what I actually made, what my net profit was from that gross number, let me break down the amount that I paid towards fees and for shipping on all of those platforms because I wanna be as cut and dry and transparent as possible to help you realize like sometimes these big old numbers aren't actually reality. Okay, so We'll break it down. So with eBay, you have to pay eBay fees. Um, you usually typically have to pay shipping. If the buyer pays shipping, they pay you directly, and then you have to pay on their platform. And then eBay also uses PayPal. So you also have a little bit of a PayPal fee. On average, uh, in my mind, I just think when selling on eBay, about 15% of that gross sales price is gonna go towards shipping and for fees. So from my 44 transactions for the month of April, my eBay fees ended up being $116.67. My eBay shipping cost was $281.87. That number basically is already paid for from the buyer, but technically out of my gross numbers, I need to take that number out to know really what I'm netting. And then the PayPal fees was $47.34. Moving on to Mercari. So Mercari takes a 10% fee, which is really great. So from my 28 transactions, I had $58.90 in Mercari fees, and my Mercari shipping fees was $43.84 because I did a trial where I offered free shipping for the first week, and some people took advantage of it whether they knew it or not, and then a lot of people just don't. And so I would have to go back in after the week and update the shipping. It kind of wasn't worth it. People just, if they want the item, they'll pay for it. Anyways, that's where the shipping fees came from. Now I don't really offer free shipping on Mercury. And so for Poshmark, they take 20% out in their, for their fees. And so my fees for my 39 transactions on Poshmark was $169.70. My shipping fees for Poshmark was $46.90. So if you want to total all that up, and hopefully I did it right, the total for all the platforms, shipping and fees, was $765.22. And so in addition to my shipping and fees, to calculate your net, your net profit, you kind of want to take out your initial investment, what you spent, your cost of goods, for those items. So in my spreadsheet, I you know keep track of all of this, which is why I'm able to report on this. But my initial investment that I got back, so the money that I paid a while ago, that's how much I paid for each item, and now all that money was paid back to me, but I just kinda wanna keep track of that number because really it's already been spent, so I'm really getting it back. 
um, but that number was $461.50. So when you combine the shipping and fees and my initial investment back, take that away from your gross numbers. And my net profit for April was $1,310.70. Pretty good for about 15 to 20 hours a week. So let's just say 15 hours a week. My hourly rate was $21.85, which I think is really great for part-time work. And then my average net per transaction was $11.80. So for each transaction, you know, some were a lot and some were very little, but my average was $11.80. So roughly whatever, 12 bucks I can expect to get back on each transaction. I do a lot of affordable resale and I happily do that because I'm somebody that likes good deals. Yeah, I like to offer a lot of affordable options to people and if I can go out to a thrift store and find a good deal and I know I can sell it to where my customer is getting a really really good deal and then I'm also getting a good deal. I feel like it's such a great win-win situation. Anyways, so yeah, those are my numbers. So from April of 2020, I netted to what I completely brought in purely after paying all the fees in the shipping and getting my money back from my initial investment. I made $1,310.70 while working 15 hours a week. So to give you a little bit of insight of what kind of items that I offer, you know, and this is gonna vary month to month, but I kind of broke down my top five highest profiting sales and also my five lowest profiting sales. With the lowest not necessarily being a bad return on my money, but I mean, it was just, you know, a certain amount of money that was quite low when you just look at it. But if you compare it to my initial investment, it wasn't necessarily a bad sale. So let's jump into that portion. So we will start, let's start with the lowest. I'm gonna switch it up. We're gonna start with the lowest. Okay, so my five, top lowest sales. I'm sure you're so interested. <laughs> so we're going to work from the highest of the lowest down to the lowest of the lowest. So my first lowest sale was this Patagonia cross tank. So it's really cute. I was really excited when I saw it. Patagonia. Oh my gosh, it's great. It was an older style and I did know that, but when I ran comps and I thought I would definitely get more than what I did for it. So I got it, my husband and I went to Hawaii in December um, for a few weeks and I wanted to go thrifting and I found this gem, but in Hawaii, the cost of living is so much. So I ended up spending $6 on this top and I ended up selling it for my gross sale was $15. <laughs> and so my cost of goods was six. And then, so I was, after all the fees, I netted $3.88, which is not very good. <laughs> so I made 0.65 times my money. So not good. For reference, I make about 3.5 to four times my money. Moving on, my second lowest sale was this Transformer Bumblebee little boy's top, super cute. And that was sold on Poshmark. My gross sales for it was nine bucks. However, my cost of goods was a quarter, 25 cents. So after all the fees, it was $3 and 68 cents. So when you see that number, it's not a lot, but when you consider the cost of the good, I made 14.72 times my money. So sure, three bucks isn't a lot, but when you only spend a quarter and you turn that quarter into $3 and 68 cents, that's really great. You can't find that kind of investment on a high yield savings account or a CD out there right now. So when you look at it like that, it makes you feel a little bit better. So that's why it's good to keep your cost of goods low. All right, so my third lowest was these American Eagle skinny jeans, older style, they had back flat pockets on it. I initially got them on a, on a sale at a thrift store so really they're not, I didn't think, I was like, oh no, I was gonna be sitting on them for a while. It was like one of those situations where you're like, why did I get these? They're gonna take forever to sell. But I sold them. I sold them on eBay and my gross sales for it was $13.40, but my cost of goods was a quarter. So 
it's okay for me to sit on things like that for a while because it just waits for the right buyer to come around. So after you take into consideration the shipping and the fees, I netted $3.36. So it doesn't sound like that big of a number, but when you break it down, I made 13.44 times my money. So that little quarter turned into 13 times more. So there you go. All right, my fourth lowest sale was, oh, Gosh, this is when I first started in a reselling and I found the crazy lamp lady first on YouTube. I don't know how I found her, but I found her and she does hard goods. I'm sure you know if you've seen her. She's really sweet and I thought I would try hard goods and I just don't have a skill for it. Stick to your bread and butter. I knew clothes, so I should have stuck to it, but that's besides the point. <laughs> I got this vintage floral teacup and saucer and I got it back when I started last July at a Goodwill. Well, thankfully it sold once I got, I got on Poshmark like a month ago, not a month ago, it's May. Shoot, <laughs> my days are running together. My second time going back on Poshmark in March, I tried it again and I'm glad I did because now I figured it out. I listed this item when I was waiting in line to go to a grocery store a few weeks ago. I was moving it from Ricari over to Poshmark and thankfully somebody bought it. So my gross sales for it was 10 bucks. My cost of goods was two bucks. And so I really only netted $2.93. So I made my money back, but I made 1.47 times my money. So that's okay. And so at least I made my money back and I profited a little bit, right? You know, just gotta take what you can get sometimes. So the last of my lowest sales were these Lucky Brand slippers and I got them at a Goodwill when my husband and I were on a road trip. And so I got them back in October of last year. I just thought they weren't gonna sell, so I just held off. They sat and sat and sat, death pile, death pile, death pile. I tried taking them to a local consignment store. They didn't take it, it was the wrong season. And I'm like, well, it's quarantine time, so, Maybe somebody might want some slippers, but I really didn't think anybody would want them. I offered free shipping for it, which, you know, probably was my fault, but it was on Mercari. So my gross sales for the slippers was $12. My cost of goods was $3.69. So I only netted $2.12 from that one. So I made my money back and then I profited $2.12 from it, so it was really a 0.57 times my money. So, not the best, but they sold and they went to somebody that really wanted them, so I'm happy with that. You know, you make your money back and at least you profited and it's just an item out your door. So, just keep that in mind. So these are our lowest sales, but they're really not. So moving on to the fun part, my top five sales, so we'll start from the lowest of the highest and work our way up to the highest of the highest. So coming in at number five, Dr. Martin's industrial steel toe boots. So these I sourced online on Poshmark. My cost of goods was kind of high for these, but I knew looking on eBay, I, I ran eBay comps because I felt like that's where they would sell. These actually sold on Poshmark, which I was surprised about. The gross sales that I got on these was $50 but my cost of goods was $12.97. My net profit, so I made my money back, but then what I profited was $23.04, which I thought was great. So when you break those numbers down, I almost doubled my money. I 1.78 times my money. So pretty good for online sourcing, I guess. Moving on, my fourth highest were these super fun, I don't know how you pronounce it, Kooji? men's jeans um they're australian denim and they had these it's a unique a little koala bear on the back and i just thought they were super fun they were different and that's why i picked them up so i found them at a local thrift store back in february so then it took about two months to sell and i sold them on ebay and the gross sales for that was 37 dollars and 40 cents and my cost of goods on these bad boys was 25 cents. So my net profit ended up being $24.28. So that is, oh my gosh, when you break it down, my quarter turning into that 24.28 
was 97.12 times my money. So that was a really good sale. All right, moving on to my third highest is this Wilson's leather jacket. I also got this at the, in February at a thrift store sale for a quarter, just like those coochie pants. I got them on the same day and I sold it on eBay and the gross sales for that was $50.54 and my cost of good was 25 cents. And then so my net profit after all the fees, the shipping and my cost of goods was $34.87. So when you break that one down, I made 139.5 times my money. That little quarter turned into about 35 bucks. Not too bad. It's just, it's just so fun. Like finding something that somebody donated, they didn't want anymore. They give it to thrift stores because they want, they're like, well, I don't want to throw it away. I want to give it to somebody that could either use it or, you know, it'll provide a job for somebody. And I pay. The thrift store what they asked for it and I take it and then I'm able to have a job and fund the things that me and my family are hoping to do so it's just overall like a great win-win and those retailed for quite a bit of money so the buyer also got a really really good deal moving on my second highest were these Adidas Tarek shoes super cool an interesting story on these. So this was a online sourcing adventure on Mercari, which I have gotten a lot of good stuff online sourcing on Mercari during this whole stay at home time. So I bought them at the beginning of April and then I sold them literally, I think it was the next day after I listed them. And so, so that was April 19th. So it took me a few weeks. I think it was about a week to get here and then a week to get through all my items and list it. But once I did, it sold pretty quick on eBay for $55.89 and my cost of good was $3.90. So my net profit was $36.27, 9.3 times my money on those. So I sourced it online on Mercari and I was looking up just like men's shoes a lot, something very general. So I looked this up and I saw this woman was selling nine pairs of men's shoes for $30 and free shipping. So I only had one picture and it was just an overview of them. And I saw Cole Hans, I saw these Adidas ones, just the little emblem on the back. And then I also saw some Nikes and I was like, I think those three right there, I'm definitely gonna make my money back. And you know, you never know what other kind of surprises it might have. And it did have a surprise, which ended up being my number one highest sale. So I messaged her real quick just to make sure that it was $30 free shipping for all those shoes. And she did reply and she was like, yep, that's what it is. And she proceeded to tell me that she's getting rid of all of her soon to be ex-husband stuff because um, there was some deception going on, which was really sad. I felt bad for her, but she was really happy to get rid of it. Somebody was interested. She was like, please take it. She was like, I will even do less than that, but I didn't want to kind of jipper on anything. So I quickly bought it, but then I also reached out. I'm like, if you have any more like lots like this, let me know. I really enjoy selling men's jeans and jackets. And she was like, I have some, let me uh, make a listing and then I'll send it to you. She did that. It was a bunch of like Abercrombie and Hollister stuff, which a lot of that stuff has already sold. Spoiler alert, I bought it all. So I ended up buying the shoes and then I was like 15 clothing pieces for 70 bucks free shipping. So each of my items ended up coming down to the $3.90 cost of good. She was looking to get rid of the stuff and I paid what she was asking for and you get a good deal. So that's where those Adidas shoes came from. So I was really grateful and happy that they sold um, to a really great buyer, really sweet, very responsive, especially for eBay. And he got a great deal and I got a great deal and I was just really happy with that. So moving on to my number one high sale, which also came from that Mercari online sourcing. I saw, I saw these boots and I told my husband, quote unquote, they're probably like Walmart boots, but I'll make some money on them. I looked at them and they were Ugg boots, freaking Ugg boots. They're, I mean, they're not the cutest, but they're men's. They were sold on eBay. 
they were the UGG Hartsville boots. So, and they were definitely worn a bit. So I worked to the best of my ability to get out a lot of um, the wear and tear on them. I did the best that I could, but when I went and got ready to package it up, it looked like there was still quite a bit on it. So I rubbed it down again with saddle soap and a lot of it, a lot more came out. So, um, but what you've been waiting for, the gross sale that I made on these boots was $79.39. So, and you know, my cost of goods was $3.90. So after the eBay fees, PayPal fees, the shipping, and the cost of good, my net profit on these boots was $54.28. That's awesome, like super fun, and it sold within the month. So a really quick flip, I made 13.92 times my money. So really great, really happy with all the sales, but I was super ecstatic to offer those really good deals to my buyers. And I also got a really good deal too. And I also helped out real people selling online, trying to get rid of their stuff. So it was kind of a win, a win, a win, a win everywhere. This is why I love, love, love reselling. Such a great job. You make your own hours, you work from home, but you also get to go out to thrift stores when, when things are normal. <laughs> and I just really enjoy it. I get these moments when I'm like in a thrift store finding stuff, I'm like, somebody is gonna just love this. And I'm finding it for them and I'm getting it for a good deal and I'm gonna be able to help fund my family and our goals financially with it. And it's just like this moment of like relief almost, like oh, I don't have to keep driving two hours a day in a commute, like in traffic and wasting my time. I don't have to work a job that I'm, indifferent about and I don't have to work 12 hours a day and be away from my husband and it's just really nice. I really, really, really enjoy reselling and I am working towards becoming more full-time. Hopefully, I mean full-time is what, 40 hours or more a week. I'm really working towards about 30 hours a week because we do have um, something extra going on where I'm also going to have to split my time towards but my husband and I real quick, we started a business during this quarantine my husband really wanted to create his own clothes and he couldn't find anything that he wanted. It wasn't functional enough for him. Um, we're very outdoorsy, athletic people and he just couldn't find it. So he was like, well, what if I created it? And he has a very creative side to him and um, it was really fun seeing that come out. So over the quarantine time, we have birthed this child and it's become a company and our shirts are going live tomorrow on Etsy. So if you're interested in seeing what we were able to come up with during quarantine, feel free to go check it out. We would just support um, our little family, but we have a lot of big plans for where we're gonna go with it. So that is it for my April sales. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you found this helpful in any way by showing you my numbers and all full transparency, I would really appreciate it if you would hit the like button down below because it will help my channel out. I'm a really small channel, but I really wanna help you guys. I wanna help as many of you as I possibly can. I've gotten a lot out of YouTube and I wanna give back and I want to just genuinely show you that it is possible without all the fluff sometimes, so. If you appreciate that, then I would also recommend subscribing to me <laughs> um, because I will be putting out new videos every Monday and Thursday based on my reselling experiences and my journey. And I will delve a little bit more into the business side of things with the business that my husband and I have going on. And it's also my resale business as well. Um, and then just e-commerce and general selling online. So if that interests you, please subscribe. I would love it. And then if you wanna leave a comment down below, if you have any questions for me, I will answer you. Believe it or not, I will answer you. <laughs> um, I don't have social media. So leave a comment down below if you want to ask me something and I will reply to you because I would like to create a different sense of community here on YouTube for the reseller community. If you're having any issues with your finances, whether it's with reselling or personally, I have a really, really good friend who's so passionate about helping you find financial freedom. She would love to help you get on track to help you reach your goals, whether that's paying off your debt or saving up some money to buy your home, whatever it is, 
she could help you. She's so phenomenal. She's helped me and my husband so much. I just love her. So if you're interested, I have her link down in the description below. It's thefinancialfreedom.coach and her name is Corinne and she is currently offering a free 30 minute complimentary coaching session to kind of figure out where you are financially and to get you on the right path to feeling financially free and my goodness, it's such a wonderful feeling. She also has a bunch of really great tips and tricks on her blog. She posts every Thursday as well. So if you're interested, go check her out. She would love to help you. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching today's video and I will see you on Monday for my next one. All right, take care, bye.